Chapter three of the Young Woman's Guide to Excellence by William A. Alcott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Self education. Woman, though now so often miseducated, must be trained in the way she should go. But let us consider a little more in detail what this education or training of woman should be, and what it should accomplish. When Agesilaus, king of Sparta, was asked what things he thought most proper for boys to learn, he replied, those which they ought to practice when they come to be men. Nor does this essentially differ from the direction of Solomon which has been quoted. If females do, in effect, rule the world, they ought, as I have said before, to be trained to sway the sceptre of moral rule in the right manner. If they now stand in the same position as regards the world and the world's happiness with that which boys were supposed to occupy in the days of Agesilaus, and if this thing was correct in his opinion, then it follows that a proper answer to the question, what things are most proper for girls to learn, would be those which they ought to practice when they come to be women. But it will not be forgotten that the definition I have given of the term education includes much more than merely direct efforts to teach. Whatever affects the health or the progress of body, mind, or soul, even though it were that in which the individual is mostly passive, as in sleep, is a part of our education. There is one point in which the views of Agesilaus concerning education, if not incorrect, are at least defective. He appears to countenance an idea still very prevalent that children and youth are not only in a state of preparation for the future, but in a state of preparation merely. They are taught what they ought to practice when they come to be men, according to Agesilaus, but according to the views of one who was wiser than he, they are to be trained in the way they ought to go. The latter view comes nearer the truth of the case than the former. It requires, or at least permits us, to train the child today for the enjoyments of today as well as for those of tomorrow, a point which the maxim of the Gesselors does not seem to include. Young people are taught almost universally by example if not by precept to consider merit if not virtue and happiness as belonging exclusively to maturity they are not enough assured that youth though a state of preparation and trial is also a state of reward and that neither usefulness nor happiness is confined to place age or circumstances i wish to see the day arrive when the young young woman especially will not look forward so much to a distant day and to distant circumstances for a theatre of action and for the rewards of action as they are accustomed to do for they thus deprive themselves of a vast amount of happiness which is due them in the present without at least enhancing the value of the pleasures of the future i wish to see them so educated that they will not only be what they should be when they come to adult age but also what they should be now they have or should have a character to acquire now a reputation to secure and maintain now a sphere of personal usefulness and happiness to occupy now it is true indeed that childhood and youth are more specially seasons of preparation and less specially seasons of reward than maturer and later life but it is also equally true that every stage of life not excepting its very evening is little more than a preparation for a still higher state where reward will predominate in a degree which will make all previous preparations seem to dwindle almost to nothing. Existence, in short, is a state of progress, having at each step, so far as we know, its trials and rewards, the rewards always, however, predominating, and the trials diminishing in proportion as personal holiness renders the latter unnecessary. It will happen, unavoidably, that many young women to whom this little volume may come will have been trained up to the time of their casting their eyes on these pages in the old-fashioned belief to which i have alluded viz that they can neither do nor be much in the world except to submit passively to certain processes which have received the name of education till their arrival at a certain size or age the fault reader if such should be the case is not chargeable solely on your parents they followed a custom which they found they did not make it but however this may be it is clear that your great object should be now to see what you can do for yourself now then here you are twelve fourteen perhaps sixteen years of age your parents have brought you up according to the existing customs for the future 
they have not sought to make you feel your present responsibilities your present power to do good your present capacity for communicating and securing happiness so much as to make you believe there are responsibilities and powers and capacities and rewards to be yours when you become to be large enough and old enough to appreciate or receive them but whatever your parents may have left undone in regard to the formation of your character it is yours to do need i urge the necessity of the case the present is an exceedingly important period in your life and what is to be done must be done quickly but what your parents have hitherto left undone they will be likely to continue to leave undone the less you apply yourself therefore and that immediately to the finishing of a work that owing to the circumstances in which they have been and still are placed and the views they have entertained they have left unfinished your education is not likely to be by any means so perfect as it should be you must take it up therefore where they have left it and do for yourself what they have not done for you in other words you must engage at once in the great work of self-education it may indeed be the case that you are the child of parents who have done their best and who have done it intelligently blessed is the young woman who has such parents but thrice blessed are the parents themselves if in the performance of their work they have the cooperation of the daughter there must be self-education even where there are the best of parents in fact the work of parental training and that of self-education should go on together they cannot well be separated parental effort will produce but half its legitimate results when not seconded by the efforts of infancy and childhood and especially of youth the reasons for this are so obvious that they hardly need to be repeated no young woman can be constantly in the company of her mother no mother can constantly watch over her daughter in the best families there are hours of each day when the child of every age especially of youthful age and capacity must be left to herself or to the influence of others what then is to become of her is she to yield to that current of the world to which everywhere sets downward you will say perhaps that she has good habit on her side together with the counsels of good and kind parents if so i say again she is highly favoured what if it happens to be otherwise what if the parents happen not to be wise and discriminating or seem unable to find time in the bustle of a busy world to do that which they know it were de desirable to do what then i repeat the sentiment then if you have the best of parents you are liable at your age to be thrown day after day into new and untried circumstances such as it were next to impossible for parents to foresee new feelings will arise unknown to yourselves and undiscoverable by them new passions will make their appearance new temptations will solicit new trials will be allotted you in spite of the best parental efforts at education there will still remain to you a great work of self-effort to assist you in it is the leading object of this little volume it is not a substitute for parental counsels it is not a substitute for your own reflections if it proved not an aid to parents in their task and if it encouraged not the reflection and the self-efforts of the young it will not accomplish its object in the preceding chapter i have endeavoured to give a general idea of education as i understand and use the term in this i have shown that no small part of the great work of education devolves in the best circumstances and much more in circumstances which are unfavourable upon the daughter i have shown that a whole life is a state of preparation indeed but also in some measure a state of reward you perceive your own character and happiness for time and for eternity to be placed in no small degree and measure in your own hands the efforts of parents friends and teachers to the contrary notwithstanding you perceive the formation of that character by the combined efforts of your parents and others yourself to constitute the work of your education you perceive yourself capable at least i hope you do of everlasting progress of approaching the great source of light and truth and knowledge and excellence for ever and ever though without the possibility of attaining it you perceive that though allied on the one side the dust you tread on you are allied on the other side to heaven that though connected by ties of consanguinity to the worm you are also connected or may be with angels and archangels and cherubim and seraphim in the glorious work of unceasing progress upwards towards the throne of god will you not then hail with joy every effort of every being who would assist your spirit in its upward flight 
to educate yourself to make progress to ascend toward eternal throne you must know yourself the laws within and without you your relations by means of those laws to other things and other beings your powers your capacities your prerogatives you must moreover know how to govern yourself in accordance with your knowledge End of chapter three